Hey, hey, hey. So today I thought we'd go over how to use media queries and also your web developer tools. Uh, media queries are pretty important because uh, they're what helps your site look good no matter what the screen size is. So a lot of times you go to a site like, you know, maybe SF Gate, like some newspaper site. And you'll see it looks, you know, pretty good, like pretty standard on the web. And then you can access your developer tools. Let's get rid of that by either pressing uh, Option Command I on a Mac, or you can just, you know, use the left click or right click and, uh, you know, inspect uh, and use your developer tools like that. So you want to open up your developer tools, and there's a cool little feature here where you can toggle the device toolbar and basically emulate, um, kind of emulate a browser as in this in a in different width and height. So we're gonna put this in, let's let's put this to, I don't know, an iPhone or something like that. Let's get rid of that. Now, we see the site still looks pretty good. Let's move this over as well. We can move these developer tools around like that. Cool. So now we got it like that. Okay, whitelist F, F gate. Oh man, all this browser junk. Uh, blah, 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 Safari, give me a site. Cool, so now we see what the site looks like. You see that now this little thing is a hamburger up here. It's no longer the regular um, uh, menu we saw earlier. And we see it has like a different outline, like a different format in general. It, but it looks good. It looks good here. It doesn't look all stupid and weird and all you know jacked up. And that's because they're using most likely responsive design. Responsive design is uh, basically different CSS rules depending on the width of the browser. And that's really important because Nowadays, that you know, so many people access sites from um, their mobile phone. You want your site to look good on a mobile phone or on a web browser. I can't tell you how many times, like I've worked in different boot camps, and students say, "Oh yeah, I got this sweet site," and you look at it, and they like, put it on LinkedIn, and inevitably, everybody on LinkedIn is like on the train or going to work or using their phone, and you look at it, and it looks terrible, and it doesn't doesn't give like a great impression. So it's great to have a good idea of how media queries are used to make sites look nice. Uh, whether on mobile or tablet or anything like that. Um, back in the days, people used to do something like they might have a different site. They might have like one mobile site, one tablet site, maybe one like other tablet site. Like they'd have a bunch of different like CSS rules just to accommodate like those three main types of devices people would use. But nowadays, people use responsive design because there's like, what, I don't know, a hundred types of different phones and tablets and they're all like a little different in their width and height, maybe of an iPhone 6s, you get the picture. There's there's just too much stuff out there to try to like accommodate. So we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna make our site responsive and uh, we're gonna go over media queries. And then I'll say this as a disclaimer here when I'm doing this. Um, I'm showing pretty basic, simple examples. And that's the point. I don't wanna get like too deep and do an hour long video where we're just watching me code and then you're copying what I code. That's not helpful. The whole reason for these videos is to give you a tiny little nugget of information that you can go ahead and run with and then use on your own because that's really the only way to learn. Uh, so many people get stuck on these tutorials and they watch some guy speak for an hour and a half and dive, deep dive into all the nuances and intri intricacies of media queries or JavaScript or whatever and they mistake that for learning. That's not learning, that's just watching somebody and retyping what they type. Uh, I don't suggest that, I've seen people do that, it doesn't work. So. Let's get down to some business. So let's make a quick um, page. So I'm gonna assume you have like an index.html page set up and a style.css file as well set up in the same project. Um, if you don't, you know, go ahead and do that. We don't need an app.js, but it's there. We'll get rid of that. Um, we're just gonna be using HTML and CSS. And we're gonna make a div. And in this div, we'll put like some text, maybe like an H1, and we'll say, um, my responsive div and we'll give it a class class equals um, responsive yeah sounds good right responsive div it is a responsive div wow this is a yeah it's a straightforward concept we're putting here okay let's check this bad boy out let's see what it looks like and let's do that by opening up um, this in our web browser so I have mine in sample.html. Sample.html is my folder, and the index.html page is, of course, the page we care about. So I'm going to drag this in here. Booyah! Look, responsive div. 
uh, you know, it's looking all right. You know, maybe we could add some color or something to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this div, you know, work here in a big browser, but we're going to make it not work on a smaller browser. So um, let's take this off first. And so I also want to go over a little bit how to use the um, web developer tools here. So a lot of times what students will do when they're, when they're new to like web development in general, they'll like keep, you know, you could make some CSS in here and just write some CSS and then see what happens. But that's kind of tedious and what if it's wrong and it's off a couple pixels. I personally like to do my CSS here first. Um, and then I like to, you know, if it, if it looks good, then hey, then we're going to use it. And that way you don't keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So here we can put element.style. We can give this like a background color of a uh, tomato. Nice, right? Look at that. Um, we'll give it a width of, you know, 600 PX or something like that. And we'll do the text align to the right. You can already see that it's not quite on the screen here. Um, so we'll give this like a width of like 500, 500 PX. Um, okay, so we give it a width of 500 PX, it's lined to the right, and it is tomato. I'm satisfied with that. You know, depending on the width of your screen, you can make it bigger, smaller. The whole point is we want this um, text to be pretty far to the right of the screen. We want it pretty far to the right of the screen. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I will increase this to maybe 700 PX. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. So I'm going to go to style.css. We're going to attach that. Um, CSS to this responsive class. So dot responsive. And if you, if, see, if this is like looking really foreign to you and you're thinking, I don't really get like this CSS stuff, like what, what is that? Then I highly suggest you do something like Codecademy and just go over the basics of HTML and CSS. Again, this is why, I mean, this is how you can do um, and learn web development without necessarily going to a boot camp. If you take the initiative to do like Codecademy, learn the really the basics of HTML and CSS, add Bootstrap on top of that, and then start applying some of the things you learn in these videos or other videos on the on the web, you can begin building things. And once you start building things, that's when that's when the real um, learning begins. Because then you'll start inevitably going deeper into the rabbit hole. So I say, hey, what about CSS? What if I wanted to, you know, make it uh, make this site look better when I do this? And you'll start having to Google those things and you'll get the knowledge, you'll put it into practice and applying it. Applying it is so important because then you'll actually get real world practical experience. All the tutorials in the world will never substitute for that experience. So please do that. It's going to take you so much further than just reading a book or watching 100 hours of a tutorial. All right. So we got this responsive div here. Okay, great. And but as the problem you see is what happens when I go like this? Ah, let's see here. If I make this into like, let's say, put this iPhone 6, or let's make it even smaller. I don't know, iPhone X. Ah, look at that. We see that the div that is no longer, we can't even see our, we just can't see our, uh, our text, right? It's no good. Now let's say you didn't want to use like iPhones or something like that. You could just put this in responsive and you could just move around like that. Oops, haha. <laughs> you can move this and make it like whatever pixels you want. So let's say this is 677 by 629, so this is width by height. So we can make it 800, 900, 1200, 1500. There we go. <laughs> so, um, oh, and this is 53%, so let's make this like 100%. 1900. All right. So yeah, you can see like how you can play with this to make it different widths and heights and all that stuff. For uh, for this purpose, let's just put it in iPhone X mode and let's put it at like 100% so we can get like a good idea of what it looks like. Now, what if we change the width of this? Like obviously the width is, is too much, right? Like So there's a couple ways we could fix this. You can either um, decrease the width for sure. You can make it like 100 PX or, you know, 300 px or whatever um or you could possibly you could leave the you could leave the width the same and maybe text align uh left you know you could do that too 
So there's a couple of options we have to fix things. This is the thing, there's never like one single answer to most things in web development. It's kind of up to you. A lot of times they'll have a designer telling you these kind of things like, oh, this is exactly how it should look on this kind of screen. Sometimes it'll be up to you and you just have to use your best judgment about what looks good and what doesn't. I'm not a designer, but I feel like I have a decent eye for web design stuff now, which you kind of need to gain if you're going to be making lots of web related things. But anyway, these are our, these are our two options here and either one is cool. Um, in fact, it doesn't really matter. The whole point we're going to do is to add a CSS uh, media query that's only going to happen when the screen is under a certain width. So we're going to say, hey, when the screen is less than, I don't know, 500 PX, do this certain CSS rule. And there's one thing we need to make sure we uh, include in the head of our doc before we can do that. So you have this little uh, meta tag here, uh, name viewport content with, uh, width equals device width and initial scale equals one. Uh, this is basically a fancy tag for saying, hey, we're going to use the viewport um, that the browser is using. That way we can get the uh, scale and understand the width and height. If you don't use this, your media queries will not work. So this is really important. You'll need to use this in order to access the browser width. Um, so if you don't have that, your media queries won't work. Now here, let's actually write a media query. So media queries work like this, okay, at media and screen, okay, Mac media and only screen max width. And we'll put 500 PX. I'm writing some here wrong. Media and screen only, is that it? I may have to look this up in a second. Actually, that's a great idea. Let's just look this up. When you're unsure of something like I am right now, great idea, just look it right up. And if you want to look something up, here's a good way to do it. Uh, CSS plus media query. Now let's look what W3Schools has to say about it. Ah, media only screen and. Look at that, media only screen and. I was so close. I had the and and the only. There we go, look at that. Media only screen and, and max with 500 PX. Now max width 500 px means that anything under 500 px apply this rule. So we're gonna put responsive and we're gonna put, uh, let's put width um, 400 px. Now this is of course not the best way to do this because imagine how many different rules we'd have to apply here. I mean in general this just isn't like good uh, CSS in general. You never wanna hard code the width usually. Um, you probably wanna make it a percentage but for the purposes of this demonstration, that's what we're gonna do. Let's save this and let's go back to our thing here. Hey, look at that. So it's looking better and better, but what if we did something else? What if we did the, um, the font size? We made that, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe a little smaller. Maybe we put it at like, you know, 20 PX. And then we refresh the page here. Well, it actually made it bigger. <laughs> what if we made it 10 PX instead, something really small? Look at that, still not exactly what we want. Or we just put width and make it 100%. 100% would just take up the width of the page and that's a much better idea because now, no matter uh, how big or small our, sc our um, screen is, it's only gonna take up 100% of the page. So it doesn't really matter. Look at that, so Galaxy S5. And we, only, and we notice this rule only takes place when the max width is 500 PX. So let's go to responsive and let's begin moving this. So eight, seven, 700, 600, uh, five, come on, 500, bam, look at that. And we can see, if you look over here, you'll, you'll notice that this rule takes an effect right around the 500 mark. If we move it over here and I'm gonna move it Bam, look at that. And we can see it in real time what's going on. So it's a really powerful tool using the responsive, um, this responsive like tool, device toolbar in your web developer tools. And then you can see how simple it is to make these different media queries. Now let's make a different, now here's a media query that's not used as often, um, but we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna use it here just for the demonstration purposes as well. So media screen, media only screen and Min width. I'm sure you can guess what min width does if you see what max width does. So min width means anything 500 px or over. So we're gonna make something kind of silly here. We're just gonna do uh, background color. 
and we're gonna make the background color be I don't know, ooh I like this pale pale turquoise an underused color for sure let's check this out bingo bango and let's go take it above oh look at that totally useless but hey it's a good that's the thing um, when you do examples like these and you're trying to just learn something, the, what you're doing doesn't have to be super useful. The usefulness is that you um, internalize it in your brain and then you understand how it works. By writing out these really simple little kind of goofy examples, we quickly see and learn like, okay, this is how you write a media query. Now, when on your own website or on your own project, apply them and then make some actual useful ones. You know, see what breaks. The best way to, to uh, no one to apply media queries is to start playing around with the tools, seeing what breaks, seeing what looks, see this looks bad right here, or this looks bad right here. And that's when you begin applying media queries. You apply them when you see things that don't look right, and then you supply CSS rules to make them look right. So I hope that was useful. Media queries are um, kind of fun to use. They're definitely necessary if you want your site to be uh, mobile responsive. And because so many people look at sites on mobile phones nowadays, you really want your site to be mobile responsive. So hopefully you've learned about, first of all, you know, quickly how to look up things that you're not sure of using your web developer tools and how to write media queries. Hope you uh, had a good time watching this and I'll be back with some more videos soon. Thanks.